You have to just fight for your life, really. Mary McMakin, American, age 73. By the look of her, innocent and unassuming. But that's a deception, because for the past five years, operating in the heart of Kabul, she ran a secret organization which defied the Taliban. Mary's organization helped Afghan women survive the insanely cruel dictates of the Taliban religious police during their five years in power. She operates through an organization called Parsa, which she founded in the early 80s with her retirement savings, all of about $200. It's hard to imagine it five, six years ago when it was all intact and all these were functioning buildings and shops. They sell their possessions. A lot of the stuff is all used stuff that they're selling. You wonder how anybody can make a living off old broken bits of tools. Yeah, some people call these underground schools, and here literally it's an underground school. While appearing to be just another charitable organization, Parsa was conducting a highly illegal operation, totally abhorrent to the Taliban, with life-threatening consequences should they find out. And that was the education of girls. When they catch anybody connected with home schools, they're going to take their chadris and, and strangle them. Yeah. Here, for reasons beyond Western comprehension, is what the Taliban feared and hated most. Girls who could read and write. She especially would like to be a teacher. And this girl wants to be a doctor when she grows up. That one isn't satisfied to be a teacher, she wants to be the head teacher. Until recently, Mary's efforts to help Afghan women and children were a carefully guarded secret. Now that the Taliban are in full retreat, her story can be told. This is the story of a brave and compassionate heart. How this is an area sort of surrounded oh, the by the <laughs> And it's for them. It's the medicine is free and the treatment is free. And we take them uh, injection tablets capsules, and a lot of other things of medicines. Mm -hmm. Well, the Quran Sharif says, if you need to feed your children, it's all right to beg. So the begging started. But this is not very dignified, and most women don't want to beg. They want to work. Most of the beggars you talk to on the streets, they say, give me work, you know, I want work. But the current authorities uh, don't allow women to work outside the home. Okay. So my purpose was to train them, give them another step forward in training. Because women were forbidden to work and most refused to beg, many of Mary's widows were forced to grow their own food in backyard gardens. But because of the drought, these gardens weren't faring so well. The extra tomatoes in the summer, they dry, grind them up and use them to cook with in the winter. So Mary, through Parsa, set about the business of installing hand pumps. See all this? This is put in by us, this concrete platform here. Because even a hand pump doesn't cost very much. It costs us $50 to get the, the extra cement cover and get the extra cement ring and pipe and all. And then the wool project. This they can clean the wool and spin it at home. Taliban law did not specifically outlaw women from working inside the home, only outside. So Mary put her resources towards developing a network of home workers. Wool spinning was one of these. Because there's so much need for the spun wool for the carpet industry here that the guys give them the wool and then they take it home and wash it and spin it and bring it back. Yeah, this is the kind that's good for carpets. This is a carpet. Oh, look at what she's doing. This woman, look at that. 
completely smooth. This is an expert, really and truly. You don't want such a tight spin on it. If there's a tight spin on it, it doesn't take the dye well. <laughs> this is to make her independent, that she is to use this money to buy the loom, buy the materials to make the rug, and then, then they can sell it. <coughs> and it's all their own business. They can be independent. <coughs> <coughs> See, Agul says that she's a poor woman and this is the first time in her life that she's ever gotten any money from any agency. <laughs> Did this article on me as the spy. In June 2001, the Taliban religious police arrested Mary, accusing her of being an American spy. It's actually a very interesting picture. You look very much like a spy. I do, don't I? They raided her office and confiscated her files. It says, what was the American spy doing in Afghanistan? So they do call me a spy. They held her in detention. Yeah, they arrested us, me and my f and seven women who were in the office. We were taken to this detention center called Dar al-Tarib. And they held us there for four days. And then the last day, the, someone from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs came with a letter. And it said, it's been ascertained that you are engaged in espionage activities and we, you are no longer needed in Afghanistan. You have 24 hours to get out. Hello. 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 Feel, huh? Feel good? Well, it doesn't feel any different than it did 100 yards <laughs> down the road. I'm very, 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 very pleased to be back, that's for sure. It's dollars, he's talking dollars. As Inja Tajalalabad, Yakunim Lakast. Let them laugh, let them laugh. <laughs> I thought he was talking uh, rupees, 300 rupees. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you, do you think it's too late to go to Kabul today? No, I think it's uh, not uh, too late. No. We do not have a lot of money, though. Do you think we need guards? The problem is that their uh, guns are now not allowed in Kabul, and we have with us two soldiers with guns, so our protection is not going to be allowed to go to Kabul. So now I have to write a note so that they will allow them through. Okay. Consensus. Yeah, everybody puts in their word, and this is what happens. So now we're all set off to Kabul. <coughs> Everything's been set up. Okay. If there is one thing good to arise from September 11, it is this. A city and a country that was given up for dead is coming back to life. And Mary McMakin, the old lady from America, has returned to lend a hand in its resurrection. Back here. Yeah, this is perfectly natural. Today, a year and a half after her arrest, she returns to a triumphant and tearful reception by the women and men she risked her life to help during the Taliban occupation. Teachers, doctors, and home workers, they all love Mary. Nice to see you. Salina Mubarak. Oh, it's been a wonderful homecoming. I had wonderful welcomes all over. Even after a year's absence, she is recognized by strangers on the street. Mori! <laughs> what did he say? What did you do to your hair? <laughs> people are happy, yes. All the people I've met are delighted to have the Taliban gone. Mary McMakin is a kind of cross between Lawrence of Arabia and Mother Teresa. Like Lawrence, she loves the country, loves the people, the language, and the culture. With this difference, she achieved heroic status there, not by leading men into battle, but by providing aid to the casualties of battle, particularly women and children. I'm an artist at heart, and I don't like to see disharmony. I don't like to see disharmony anywhere. 
It's not that I am torn by the tragedy of things. I'm not. All those terrible things exist, but my motivation is to bring everything into harmony again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.